and welcome to day four of Lenore March, where we get to talk about our decks. Yay! Hello, my name is Judy, and I'm a decaholic. Well, actually, I'm, I like to think I'm a recovering decaholic at this point. Um, I went a bit mad, <laughs> don't we all, when I sort of got into the Norman, which was about four years ago now. Um, I probably haven't actually bought any decks of that ilk for about the past two years, but in the first two years, I managed to acquire 25 decks. There, I've said it. Um, but what you see in front of you is pretty much all I, I use. Um, and in fact, this one, um, I don't actually use anymore. This is my original deck, and I would recommend it to anyone starting out because it's nice and clear and simple. There's a lovely bouquet. This is the Piatnik Lenormand. Stars, the garden, not to be confused with the tree. It's all very obvious that it's a garden and not the tree card. That kind of thing is important. Scythe, birds, so on and so forth. Lovely images. Yeah, I'm not going to show you every single one of them. Most of you are probably familiar with this one in any case. Um, yeah. Yes, they're pretty. Um, there's clouds with a clear light and dark side. That's always a good thing. Uh, nice clear card insets. Uh, you've got the number there. You haven't got the name, but you don't need the name when the image is as obvious as this. The child, the ring. And that's what you want. Nice, clear, unambiguous images. Very nice. Very pretty. Um, nice size. Um, yes. So, as a, as a beginner's well, not even as a beginner's deck, but for somebody starting out, I highly recommend this deck. This is a good one. Um, the deck I use, not the most often, second most often, this is the deck I carry around in my handbag with me. So, you know, if you've ever run across me in the street um, and you want a Lenormand reading, this is what you're going to get. This is the Russian Lenormand, and this was designed by a woman called Egalis Singh, um, she used to hang out quite a bit on Facebook in the various Lenormand Facebook groups, um, but she's sort of well, she's she's sort of backed away. Uh, she hasn't disappeared. We know that she's you know sort of doing other things at the moment. So you don't see her around as much anymore. But this is, as it says, a Russian one, or you know, her take on a Russian one. So all the names are in Russian, but you still have your card, you still have your number. That's still obviously a house. That's clover. That's a scythe. That's your whip, or your whip and uh, broom. There's the man with his walking stick. That is so cute. Birds, mouse. You know, there's no confusion, again, with this deck. Just lovely, clear, simple images. She sort of, the, the, the staining is to sort of represent you know, those really old decks that have been, you know, in, in coffee houses and around people smoking for decades. And, you know, so they've gone all sort of yellow and uh, lovely. I love this deck. And this is a very powerful deck. Um, I uh, This is a very special one for me. I love this deck. Oh, and also Egla and I were born on the same day, so it's kind of special for me as well. Yeah, so I like that one a lot. This one was published um, with the help of Paris de Bono. Um, and I'll come back to that in just a second, because this is my absolute favorite deck. This is the deck that I use all the time, well, I say all the time, when I'm reading Le Normand. This is Paris de Bono's um, black and white drawing deck. Now it's, let me see if I can find one here, it's a bit hard to see in this light, but they aren't exactly black and white. The, the background is actually a very pale la uh, lavendery sort of color. Very pretty. Um, but again, very clear images. You've got your number, you've even got the title this time, you've got your, your suit, um, fish, child, man, lily, I like that sun. Very clear, very, <laughs> I think, yeah, um, the Eiffel Tower for Paris, well, he just had to, didn't he? Now, this is Paris de Bono of the Fortune Telling Shop in Sydney, no, the Fortune Teller's Shop in Sydney. Um, and he, he's on Facebook, he has a website, he's on YouTube, you know, you can easily find him. But this is the deck I go to all the time. Look at that mountain, that. I like that, a nice solid mountain. And you, I don't know if you can quite make it out on the back, but the edges are starting to get a bit worn and the black is starting to wear off a little bit. Yeah, this is a good one. I like this deck. 
Um, but yes, uh, Kelly, in her first uh, Lunar March video, was talking about wanting perhaps a mini deck with which to do uh, a grand tableau, which is where you lay out all 36 of the cards, which can take up an awful lot of space if you've got, you know, cards that size. So, I'm sort of reaching around, so I'm bit <laughs> groping around, so I'm sort of looking around my camera. I bought a mini to go as well to use it. Actually, the truth is, I bought this mini because I actually wanted another one of these because I thought, you know, I'm going to wear those out. I want another one. But the next year, he'd changed the design slightly. Um, all of this was, was much more highly colored, much stood out a lot more. It was a bit distracting. I didn't like it as much. And all he had left was the mini. So I thought, oh, well, I, they're, they're good for, for uh, Grand Tableau. So there you go. Nice, clear images, tiny, so you can spread them all out. Although, you can simply spread these out and just lay them sort of on top of each other, you know. If, you, if you've got titles, if the titles are at the top, I don't think in this deck they all are, um, then you don't need to see the whole card. You can sort of recognize, you know, the top of the coffin and the top of the letter and stuff like that, and you can lay them out that way. But it is nice to have a mini deck, and actually, I'll confess that I actually have two of these. Um, yeah, because I really 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 like this deck so but that's what you're looking for and the other thing as well when you're laying out all 36 cards and you're trying to read them you want a deck that is totally unambiguous is very clear images you want to be able to look at it and go ah there's the anchor there's the heart there's the man there's the woman you don't want to be going oh is is that the garden or is that the paths is this you know the yeah, whatever. You know, you need to be able to just see everything at a glance, nice and clear. So that's very important. Um, <laughs> if I sound a bit sort of, Ugh, this is my second recording of this um, uh, prompt, I suppose. Um, the first one I have been trying to load for oh god, practically 24 hours, and it's just not happening. So I thought, oh, give it up, girl. You're just going to have to go and record it again. So, I certainly hope I can get this one loaded. Um, yeah, I don't think I've got anything more to say to that. The next one's going to be about the decks that we have or had that um, don't work for us. And, uh, yeah, I'll be talking a little bit about why that is or why, you know, we individually think that is. I mean, some of these decks may be perfectly good for somebody else, but they just don't, they don't happen to work for you. Anyway, looking forward to seeing everybody else's. Um, and uh, see you for day five. Bye.